Today, we're going to talk about how to write parameter expressions using Python. And to demonstrate this, we're going to make this what looks to be a simulation, but is actually just um, an animation generated by Python parameter expressions. So with that in mind, let's dive in. So let's make a geometry node, and I'm going to call it demo. And we're going to go inside, and we're going to make three objects. We're going to make two spheres, the two spheres that will co collide with each other. We'll have sphere one, and we'll have sphere two. Not connected. They'll appear to be rolling along a plane. For that, we'll use a grid. So we have three objects here. Let's merge them. And let's be good. Houdini citizens and have a null output and call that output. So here we have a grid and two spheres. The two spheres are overlapping, so it looks like there's just one. So let's clean this up. First, for the grid, let's make it 20 by 10. And we don't really need a lot of subdivisions because we want it to just look like a nice floor. Now, for this first sphere, we'd like it to start at the far end. And if you take a look at what orientation that is, by looking at the axes in the lower left-hand corner, we're going to be moving in the negative x direction. So, to do that, we're going to take the center and move it in the negative x direction. But how far do we go? I mean, we can eyeball it, but eyeballing it is not really the Houdini way of doing things. So what I would like to do is actually get the starting position from the dimensions of the sphere and the rectangle. So the first sphere, we just adjusted the x coordinate of the center until it was at the kind of like the far left part of it. To see what that is, is the grid is 20 by 10. So it's 20 in the x direction, 10 in the y, I mean in the z direction because it's in the zx plane. So what we would like is for the first sphere, we would like its position here to be negative half of the width in the x direction. So we're going to right click here and copy parameter, come back to the first sphere, and we're going to paste relative reference. Now, if you click on a parameter, you can see the entire expression. And, and here a function is being called, called ch for channel. And in it, it's giving a path to the parameter that it's referencing. By the way, there's two ways to write parameter expressions, in Python or HScript. If you see it H here, that means you're using HScript. But if you see the Python logo, that means all the expressions you're writing will be in Python. Also, I would like to say one thing about this function ch. And to see that, let's pop over to the Python shell. Let me create a Python shell here. Now, if you type in dir parentheses, it lets you know what packages are available. You have these things that are always there, those, these things to start and end with double underscores. This is the inter thing, interesting things. One of them is HOU for Houdini. And if you look at the directory of, of this, there is a ton of stuff. And so we want to focus right now. We don't want to get distracted because there's too much to talk about in a year. So we're interested in this function ch. So let's type in help hou.ch. This will give us instructions on what this function is and what it does. And it says here, this is the same as eval parm, and it's provided for backward compatibility. So really, this is actually an out-of-date function. You want to use the more up-to-date one, eval parm. Now, I'm not sure why Houdini still uses ch when you do the copy and paste parameter, but let's come in here and change it to eval parm. And I, parm is spelled parm with an R, not pam. Now, we made a mistake. Uh, well, I should say I'm not quite done here. So this gives us the width of it. But what we want to do is take negative half of that. And that puts the first sphere at this end. Now we're going to do something similar to the second sphere. So it's going to be at the end of the right. So once again, we're going to come to the grid, copy the parameter for the width, go to the second sphere, go to the center here, and paste relative reference. And if you click here, it toggles back and forth between the parameter 
expression and the value. The expression, value, expression, value. Well, here we want to use half of it, but we're gonna use positive one half. So now we have the two spheres at either end. Now this is more like the Houdini way to do things because we're giving instructions on what to do. We're not hard coding values. As you can see, if we were to resize the rectangle, the spheres always have the correct starting point. But we're gonna keep it to 2010. However, the next thing we notice is that the spheres don't look like they're sitting on top of the rectangle. They'd like to move them up a little bit. And how much do we need to move them up? Well, if we go to sphere one, there's three radii, and radius in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. And we're looking in the up down, and the up down, if you look in the corner, is the y direction. So we want to move this up the radius in the y direction. So let's copy the radius, copy the parameter for the y radius, and in the center, let's just paste the relative expression. Whoops, there we go. Once again, notice it uses the function ch instead of eval parm. You can use either one. Um, ch is shorter, it's six letters shorter, but for whatever reason, I like knowing I'm using the most up-to-date one. It's kind of a good habit for me. So now if we look at this in, zoom in a little bit, it looks like the sphere is sitting nicely on our floor. Let's do the same thing for this sphere, sphere two. So for sphere two, we're gonna copy the y radius, not the x or z radius. We're gonna copy that parameter. We're gonna come down here and paste the relative reference. There we go. So they now have uh, good starting positions. Right now, the spheres are primitives. I'd like to change them to polygon, how about polygon meshes? We'll do that for both of them. And the reason for that is as a polygon mesh, you can see the rotation a little bit more. So here we have the starting position of the animation I showed you in the beginning. And so far, we've written some very basic parameters in Python, but we did them by copying and pasting. Let's actually now to kind of write some things by hand to make this happen. Because right now, if we hit play, nothing happens. They're not moving. We have to actually tell it how we'd like them to move. So we're gonna start with sphere one. To make the first sphere move, let's edit this expression. Right now, it just gives it a static number of negative 10, but we want to add some movement to it. So if you click on this and do Control E, it brings up an editor for this expression, a little easier to work with than this tiny little text box that you have. So this is the starting position. And what we would like is, as time goes by, we'd like to increase the value of this X coordinate. So we could say, what about two times time? This is the Python function for returning the current time at a particular frame. So let's accept that. Two, by the way, is just kind of like the velocity of this. We'll see that in a second. So if we hit accept and play, you can now see sphere one is moving towards the right at a constant speed. If we edit this and let's say increase this value to three, play it back, you can see it's moving a little faster and we can change it to something like six if you wanna see a dramatic change. Okay, there we go. So we're going to go at a slightly s slower speed of two. And since this is the by default Houdini works in the metric system, this is actually two meters per second. So hit play, sphere one is moving. Now let's go over to sphere two and do control E to bring up its value. Now here we want to decrease the X coordinate and it'll be speed times time. Accept that, so they're both gonna be going at the same speed. And now when we play it back, look what happens is they get close to each other. They just go through each other. This isn't a simulation. They don't know about each other. It's not taking into account collisions whatsoever. So here is what I would like to do. I would like to have this give the impression, well, two things actually. Let's now actually have the sphere spinning because right now you do this, this just doesn't look like realistic motion. Now we're gonna eyeball this. Normally I would actually calculate the math to make sure that I'm getting perfect uh, rolling, but for now let's just eyeball it, keep things simple. So the center is moving and it should be rotating, rotating in this direction. And that's along the Z axis. So if you go to rotate on the Z axis, it's not the positive way, it should be in the negative direction. So we're going to set this up to be, how about something like negative 50 times time, negative 50 degrees per second. If we roll, rotate that, 
you can kind of tell this doesn't look very realistic. It looks like it's kind of skidding on ice a little bit. So I'm just going to move my mouse over the negative 50 and decrease this a little bit more. How about to negative 80? And do that. Looks a little better. I will... Uh, it feels like there's a little bit of skidding, and I have a feeling everyone has a different sensibility to whether or not it looks like it's obeying the laws of physics. If, for me, this looks pretty good. For you, if you see the mistake in it, please don't be too harsh on me in the comments. Let's come over here to sphere two. Now we're going to rotate this one, and in this case, we want to rotate around we want to rotate around the z axis in the positive direction. So let's do a similar amount, 80 times time instead of negative 80 times time. Now it looks like they're rolling, and then they just roll right through each other. So we need to do a collision. So at some point, as we scroll through, it looks like they collide. And let's zoom in here and get a good close look at to when that happens. It looks like at around frame 109 is when we want to pretend these two, um, these two spheres collide with each other. So how can we do that? We want this first sphere on the left to just keep rolling and moving without any, without any interruption. In a way, we're pretending it's like a more massive sphere. So, and this could be like maybe styrofoam, a little lighter, so that it just loses all its momentum. And so we have to do a little bit of tinkering with sphere two. At frame 109, look at the x coordinate. It's one. That's going to be important to make sure we get the get the dynamics right. So they're rolling at frame 109, they need to collide. So for sphere two, click on X, control E, bring up editor. If the frame is less than or equal to 109, you have to return this value. And here, because it's a multi-line expression, you have to actually say return what, what value you want. Else, if the frame is not less than or equal to 109, that means it's greater than 109, we're going to return something else. What we're going to do is return 1 plus the speed at which we'll be moving is 2, but we can't do 2 times time because watch what happens. I want to do this, but I want to show you how that messes things up. The slow roll and the collision, see that big jump? The reason is, let's, let's rewind, once you get to 109, the collision point, it pops over. And that's because it's using the time value here. And it's one plus two times time. In a way, what we'd like to do is reset the time value at this frame. So how do we do that? It's like we want to kind of start the clock over. So what we can do is take the current time minus, we want to reset the clock at frame 109. So let's call, there's a function, a very useful function called frame to time of 109. So what this says is at frame, whatever the current time is, subtract the frame of the time at frame 109, because that's our reset. And now we're moving in the positive x direction rather than the negative x direction. And see how this how this looks. Okay, that's good, but look at the rotation. It would be kind of nice if the rotation of the second ball stopped so that it looked like it was now kind of skidding. So once again, this is going to be kind of a, a multi-part rotation function. So we're going to come to the rotation here expression, and this is for sphere two. And it's rotating 80 degrees positive 80 degrees in the, around the z-axis every second. So if the frame is less than or equal to 109, we're going to do this. Else, whoops, I almost forgot the return. Return 80 times time. Else, return some number. Let's just return zero. That's the wrong number, but we'll see what it is in a second. Okay, they're rolling very slowly, the anticipation. Okay. It looks pretty good, but let's actually take a close look and you'll see there is a mistake. Frame by frame, they're getting close to colliding. Oh my goodness, I may have gotten a little bit lucky. They collide at frame 109 and at frame 109, the rotation just happens to be 360. That was a lucky coincidence. 
So really what I should have done here is return 360 because we want to now keep the, the amount of rotation. 360 just happens to be one circle. A little disappointed. I was hoping it would have been a little bit off. So the takeaway from this is I would say several things. One is, let's come to the, the sphere here, is, is Houdini will use CH as a shortcut to get the value of a parameter by name. But as we saw in the Python shell, ch is the same as evalParm, evaluate a parameter. It's shorter, Houdini uses it, I guess there's no harm in using it, but for whatever reason, I prefer using evalParm. For the x coordinate, for the first sphere, it's just a single expression, and we see that there's two functions that we use here. One is evaluate the parameter, and it gives a relative path to the parameter that we want to use. Next is we introduced the time function. For sphere two, things were a little more complicated. If we look at the X, control E, we see we had to use a multi-part expression. So for leading up to the collision, we return this as the value for what the X position should be. But after the collision, we have to kind of reset the clock by changing from negative two to positive two. And in this, we introduced a new function frame to time. And similarly on rotation, it's a multi-part multi -part expression. And with multi-part expressions, you have to use a return. With a single line expression, you do not have to use a return. So there we go. I hope you find this helpful.